Hello Virtual Dreamers, Gregory here. Should a real Sword Art Online have anime graphics or realistic graphics? It's easy to forget, but to anime characters, the world they're experiencing is supposed to be just the same as ours from their perspective. So when it comes to adapting the SAO VR experience, would that mean recreating what the story says it's supposed to be? Or would that mean creating a vision of what the story appears to be? The answer is actually pretty simple if you ask me, so hit that like button because I'm about to save you some time and thinking. First off, since we're talking about the anime art style here, it's worth addressing their backgrounds. If you take away the animated characters and animals, most anime are basically just still life paintings of real world-esque environments. Some even take place in real areas like Kiyomizu Dera, Fushimi Nari Taisha, Akihabara, and really just about any anime that isn't taking place in another world usually just takes place in this one, and I can even get nostalgic when I see these places in anime. It seems that even current anime and comic book based games are aware of this, and oftentimes we already see realistic environments just with animated characters on the front. So really, this discussion isn't going to hinge on the environments, but how we represent the characters. And on that matter, I have a very simple answer. Aiming for photorealistic characters in VR at this moment is a waste of time, stick to stylized visuals. That answer probably seems reductionist, but the reasoning behind this declaration on my part is threefold. Computational performance, development cost, and effectiveness. Performance-wise, it's difficult to render realistic characters due to the amount of detail required to produce them. Everything down to the thousands of hairs, micro detail of the skin, complex subsurface scattering, and animation subtleties take up more processing power to render at full human detail than a stylized character needs. Even if this wasn't a problem, the end result of the work would be selling to a market whose PCs would barely be able to run that level of visual fidelity. We have people crying about the price of a 2080 Ti that can barely manage 1440p in Battlefield 5 with DXR on. Ray tracing is gonna be important to photoreal visuals. When you add that to the fact that VR takes away the effectiveness of some of our best performing saving items like normal mapping and doubles the rendering load, it becomes easy to see that we have some pretty serious constraints. Maybe in a decade or two this power will be standard, but in the now, it's not. Ultimately though, the final nail in the coffin amounts to the fact that photoreal in VR is nowhere near as forgiving as it is in a normal game. Using virtual reality allows you to make just about everything you see feel real. But with the added visual sophistication, our eyes get more data with which to encounter the uncanny valley. For those who are unaware, the uncanny valley is the term used to refer to the point where a stylized depiction of a character has become sufficiently real that our brain stops treating them as Daw thinks it's people and switches to OH GOD WHAT'S WRONG WITH THAT THING This is a well known issue that affects us even in real life, let alone with video games. Pushing towards photoreal is playing with fire for almost no cost benefit. So to put it simply, it makes sense for Sword Art Online to prioritize its stylized visuals for the human characters. To do otherwise is to challenge the uncanny valley at its fiercest. When the franchise is already mostly recognized for its anime aesthetics, it just makes more sense to stick to that in the first place. Then again, they're already on that track and I don't think they want to compromise potential waifu sales for that. Unless that Netflix live action adaptation busts some serious records. Guess we'll see though.